chondrules are believed to have formed early in the solar system's history, and their origin is still a subject of scientific investigation and debate among researchers. One leading theory suggests that chondrules form through rapid melting and solidification of droplets or globules in the early solar nebula. These droplets could have been molten due to high energy processes such as shock waves, electrical discharges, or heating from solar flares. As these droplets cooled and solidified, they would have formed spherical shapes due to surface tension. Most chondrites also exhibit iron-nickel grains, which become visible when the chondrite is cut or sectioned. The metallic grains found in chondrites are likely the result of the same process that formed the chondrules, with iron and nickel condensing and solidifying into small metallic grains that were then incorporated into the chondritic material. It's worth noting that not all chondrites contain metallic grains and the abundance and composition of chondrules and metallic grains can vary widely between different types of chondrites. This variation can provide clues to the conditions and processes that were at play during the formation and evolution of the early solar system. This is an ordinary chondrite meteorite. It exhibits distinct features, including a glossy black to brown fusion crust on its outer surface. The fusion crust is one of the most distinguishing characteristics of meteorites. While the fusion crust is smooth, glassy, and often darker in color, the interior exhibits a fragmented texture composed of chondrules and mineral grains. Chondrules are small, rounded objects that formed early in the solar system's history and are a characteristic feature of ordinary chondrites. The interior also contains a matrix, which is a fine-grained material that binds the chondrules and other components together. Ordinary chondrites are denser than the average earth rock, primarily due to the presence of metallic minerals like iron and nickel. As a result, most meteorites would be attracted to magnets. If you look closely, you may see some of the metal grains on the surface, giving the fusion crust a speckled appearance. Additionally, they can exhibit regmaglyphs on their surface. Regmaglyphs are thumbprint-like depressions or cavities that are carved out by ablation during atmospheric entry. They are formed when the meteorite's outer layers vaporize and erode away as it encounters the extreme heat and pressure of the atmosphere. The regmaglyphs found on iron meteorites tend to be more well-defined and pronounced compared to those on stony meteorites due to the higher density and strength of the metallic composition. When discussing chondrites, two different measures of iron content are often used, metal content and total iron content. Metal content refers specifically to the amount of metallic grains, which are primarily composed of iron and nickel, that are present in the meteorite. These grains can be relatively large and are easily visible to the naked eye. Total iron content, on the other hand, refers to the total amount of iron present in the meteorite, regardless of its form. This includes both metallic iron in the form of metal grains, as well as non-metallic iron-bearing minerals such as iron oxides and silicates. These minerals are typically much smaller and can be more difficult to identify and quantify than the larger metal grains. When it comes to ordinary chondrites, they are classified based on their composition. One such group is the H chondrites, where the H stands for high iron. These meteorites contain a high amount of iron, which typically ranges from 25 to 30 percent of the meteorite's total weight. Of this iron content, 15 to 19 percent is in the form of metal grains that are easily visible to the naked eye. L-chondrites, on the other hand, contain a slightly lower iron content, typically ranging from 20 to 25 percent of the meteorite's total weight. However, what sets them apart from H-chondrites is the lower amount of metal grains present, which only make up around 1 to 10 percent of the meteorite's weight. Lastly, there are LL-chondrites, where the LL stands for low metal, low total iron. These meteorites have a much lower metal content, ranging from 1 to 3 percent of the meteorite's weight. The total combined iron content is between 19 to 22 percent of the meteorite's weight, making them distinct from both H and L-chondrites. In 1967, two experts in meteoritics, W. Randall Van Schmoos and John A. Wood, introduced a comprehensive classification system for chondrites that is still used today. 
This system categorizes chondrites into six petrographic types, ranging from type 1 to type 6, based on 10 criteria, including meteorite composition, chondral and matrix texture, bulk carbon content, and metallic minerals. However, for simplicity, we will focus on three criteria that can be easily observed by the naked eye or microscope, chondral texture, matrix texture, and metallic mineral content. Ordinary chondrites are classified by a letter, such as H, L, or LL, followed by a number ranging from 1 to 6. The number reflects the degree of thermal metamorphism the chondrite has experienced, with higher numbers indicating more extensive changes. To better understand the different types of ordinary chondrites, we can examine thin sections of three ordinary chondrites, each with distinct petrographic types, photographed at the same scale. Type 3 chondrites are the most primitive and valuable scientifically, with well-defined, closely packed chondrules within a black, fine-grained matrix. Type 5 chondrites have less coarse textures, fewer chondrules, and more solid-state recrystallization. Type 6 chondrites have few remaining chondrules and blurred boundaries due to recrystallization. When we come across a meteorite labeled as Chelyabinsk LL5, the name Chelyabinsk refers to the place where the meteorite was discovered, the Chelyabinsk region of Russia. The letters LL indicate that this meteorite has a low metal and low total iron content, while the number 5 signifies that it has undergone a moderate degree of thermal metamorphism. So the name of the meteorite denotes its origin. While the letters and number provide details about its composition and the level of thermal changes it has undergone,